And people ask me this kind of stuff all the time. Yeah. Like, what do I do? How do I sleep better? How do I stop stressing? And usually I find that people are not serious, meaning they, they want an answer, but they don't want to do the work. Right. Yeah. right. So I was like, look, it's really simple. Can you not eat until 2 p.m.? Mm. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not hungry in the morning. I'm like, great, drink coffee, drink water. And in the morning, get up and just either run or get on some exercise bike and just pedal like someone's chasing you with a syringe full of poison. Right in the morning <laughs> after when you wake up. Yeah, or, you know, after a few minutes, okay. you know, give okay. yourself some time, <laughs> go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, so no, you're no, serious. I yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, well, I have questions yeah. about this Early because day. I'm yeah. the opposite, right? Yeah. I, I, I find it hard for me to gain weight and stuff like that. So please continue right. though. I got a, this question yeah. after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, the reason I felt any uh, sense of agency in giving this information is, yeah, I've done a bunch of different things in neuroscience related to vision and neuroplasticity and stress, but I, I've done some work and continue to do some work with special operations and some of these groups that are interested in how you use biology to improve human performance mm -hmm. over long periods of time. Okay. So, you know, basketball players, you know, yes, military, yes. you know, these kinds of things. And so there's a pretty straightforward formula where when you've been asleep all night, your fuel reserves, like you've got fuel in your fat, you, you guys don't have any of that, but you got fuel in your fat, you've got fuel in your muscles that can mm -hmm. be burned and you've got fuel in your liver, it's called glycogen. And mm -hmm. when you wake up early, all of that is as low as it's going to be because you haven't been eating anything. Got you. And so if you exercise, then your body starts dropping into your body fat stores quicker. So what I was trying to give Mike was a, was a tool that would allow him to see some results really quickly. Oh. So I said, look, do it fasted mm -hmm. and then continue to hydrate and then eat your first meal in the afternoon. And I said, and also, it, you know, do you like drinking? And he was like, well, I don't know. I drink mostly because it kind of sets me straight up here. And I was like, well, we can talk about the stuff to kind of set your head level. I mean, he wasn't spun out. He just obviously was m medicating with alcohol. Sure. Um, and not in a severe way, because he's fully functional. He's an amazing photographer, yeah. he has two kids. Yeah. And so I sure, want to be sure. clear about what we're talking about here. Yeah. Um, I didn't detect anything dysfunctional about him. He was just reporting to me that he wanted some assistance. Right. So I said, you know, would you be willing to drop the drinking or, or you know, pair it back? Yeah. And he said, sure. So, okay, so explain that. And I said, look, and you know, here's my number just, um, for the anxiety and stress management, uh, I'll give you some breathing, some respiration tools that work really well mm -hmm. that are not, you know, woo mysticism. Mm -hmm. It's not, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna tell you to meditate 30 minutes a day, although that's a cool practice too. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you some tools you can use in real time as you're working hard and okay. dealing with whatever it is you're dealing with in life. Okay, so that ends, the conversation ends, you know, and um, Greg Hunt was there too, okay. I knew from growing yeah. up. Yeah. Um, talked to Greg a little bit and then, a year later, Mike reach out, reaches out and says, hey man, thanks for all that stuff you gave me. I was like, oh, cool. And he's like, I lost 60 pounds and I <laughs> haven't had a sip of alcohol since we talked last wow. and feeling pretty good. Damn. And I was like, so how did you do it? He's like, well, I get on the bike and I pedal as hard as I can and like someone chasing me with a <laughs> syringe full of poison. Sure. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, he remembered. Yeah. You know, and I was so impressed, like very few people can just take the the menu and just do it, Go. right? Right. And maybe it's his Midwest upbringing. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did get gifted a AK rifle for his ninth birthday, living in Ohio, Jeez. growing up. I mean, okay. that. I mean, Mike's. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but some people yeah. also, I feel like, reach that point in their life where they're like, "It's time. This yeah. is a, right. whether it's smoking yeah. or drinking. Like they, you can't quit smoking unless you're mentally prepared to, right? It's like there's that 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 switch. Look, I always say, the beauty of being young is that neuroplasticity, your nervous system's ability to change mm -hmm. in response to experience to learn things, mm -hmm. is at its absolute peak. Mm -hmm. However, you don't have that much control over your life. The very specific young, sequence right. of especially steps when you're that's really required. Young. As you get older, it gets harder to change your nervous system, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. But the advantage you have is that you can direct exactly what changes you want to happen. Mm. And so there are two different ways to change your nervous system, depending on whether or not you're younger or you're older. And it's not like the gate drops right at 25. Okay. It just tapers off. But Mike made the decision. And I always say, you, you, if somebody is an adult, you can't change their mind. Right. You literally can't. They have to make the decision to do that. And he flipped the switch. He flipped it. He flipped it and he's still there. And um, I think he feels much better yeah. physically. And then.